right, guys, how you doing? It's Shabir, hope you're all good. I've just got back from America, still recovering from the lag. Went to visit Sweetwater with Victory, had an awesome time. Anyway, this video uh, is a pretty exciting one because basically we've got a couple of gigs with Frog Leap and as some of you might know, I've moved across to the Quad Cortex for those gigs now. I was using the Line 6 Helix and Shuriken setup, but I have now found a way to make it work with the Quad Cortex and any guitar of my choice, which is amazing. So I get to use my SIGs um, for the, the gigs, and also I get to use the Quad Cortex with captures of my amps and all the rest of it. So I'm really excited. But this video, I've just been sent a package and I wanted to unbox it on camera and go through what's in the box and basically just do a little video geeking out about some cool stuff that I've just received that is very relevant to what I just told you. Okay, this has come from Germany from an awesome dude called Martin from Schmidt Array Pedalboards. Now, you can probably guess from the title of the video that this is a new pedal board for me to use with my Quad Cortex for all the future gigs that I'll be doing with it. We designed it to be able to house the Quad Cortex, a power supply, expression pedal, and then a couple of, a couple of other pedal options uh, that I want to incorporate into my Quad Cortex presets. So in this video, we're going to unbox it. We're going to try set it up and, you know, see how far we can get. Oh, wow. It's seriously wrapped up. God damn it. It's in a flight case, which is great because we will be doing fly gigs and you want it, you, you know, you want your gear to be protected. So that's great. Let's crack back on. Let's get inside this now. Check it out. Okay, so let's have a look. Yes. Very best to you, Rabia, Martin Smith. What a legend. Absolutely one of the nicest guys I've had the pleasure of meeting through this through this mental whatever you want to call it career that I've had. You know, he's such a nice dude, made great pedal boards. I know Mick and Dan are huge fans of Schmidt Array and yeah, what can I say? Absolutely love their stuff. Obviously, the QC is gonna sit here, which is nice. Got the expression pedal there, and under the lid, we've got some protective foam. Got a Schmidt Array t-shirt, very cool. We've got all the, what's really nice is they've included the Velcro for the pedals and stuff, which is a very nice thing to do because I have my own, but you know, if you don't have it, it's a bit annoying <laughs> if you don't have it and you can't start building your pedal board, but they, it's nice they included that. An awesome, awesome feature is the little USB lights. These USB lights are rechargeable, so it goes on the pedal board so you can see what you're doing, which is really nice. Yeah, awesome. Let's crack on and start rigging things up. This is the Mission Engineering SP1. It was recommended by uh, Max at Neural uh, as probably the best one to use for the Quad Cortex. They do actually do one in uh, the same color as the Quad Cortex, but they didn't have it available. So yeah, basically SP1. So the first thing I need to do is uh, take the feet off and the cellophane, because that's the best bit, and then put the uh, Velcro on it so it can sit on this raised up area here, as you can see on the board. It sits on this raised up area, so it's a little bit more accessible when you need to get to it, so that's cool. For all those out there who appreciate this as much as I do, let me show you. Oh yeah. That's great. That was probably the most satisfying part so far. What's great about the Mission pedals is they have two uh, expression outs, so you can control two pedals simultaneously. So now we need to put the screws back in. Obviously, they would be screwed into the rubber themselves, which is a bit annoying, but we gotta get them out. How am I gonna get those out? A few moments later. Well, not off to the best start. I uh, sheared off, <laughs> managed to shear off one of the screw heads in the pedal, and also the screws are slightly too long, so you can't just take the feet off and secure it on this particular model. And I also didn't have any other screws that were small enough to do it, so what I've done is taken the Leatherman to the SP1 and sheared off as much of the feet as possible. I bet a lot of you uh, pedal board uh, OCD guys are probably cringing right now. That's the best I can do. So not only is it lopsided, but it's also uh, missing a foot. In any case, we must press on. Okay, so after that palaver, it's not fully <laughs> It's as secure as I can as I can get it. I mean, a little bit annoyed about that, but that's my own fault. Next, we're gonna put the Quad Cortex on the board. Um, I need to basically take the rubber feet off that I've put on there and just position it in a way. I wanna make sure that like, 
It's back far enough and yeah, it looks pretty good to me. Okay, so I need to take the rubber feet off and then I need to secure this in place with some Velcro. Just gonna do four corner pieces. Don't wanna get too mental on the Velcro. Now, even though I've taken off the feet, I need to put the Velcro on. If you're doing this yourself, don't do what I did once did to an old pedal and Velcro over the, you know, the bolts to be able to take the back off. It was a bit of a stupid decision on my part. However, I'm much older and much wiser. So let's get this bad boy stuck down. Quad Cortex is now on the board. The next thing I'm gonna be putting on the board is the power supply. I wanna give you a quick note on the power supply specifically. So this is the Cheox, I think that's how you say it, DC7 power supply. Now this is the only recommended power supply to use with the Core Cortex from Neural DSP themselves. I can see why, because it's, it is very advanced for a power supply. Uh, it's quite expensive. This was 250 quid, so it was a bit of a hit. And not only that, you also have to buy separately these adapters, as you can see. You've, I've got, but you've got to buy three of these adapter cables. It bridges the power of those outputs down to one cable that powers the Quad Cortex because it uses almost as much power as a laptop. I mean, it's just the way it is, but it'd be nice if there were more options than a 250 quid power supply, but. So I'm gonna be mounting the power supply to the underside of the board. Similar to the, um, the way the gig rig one's set up, it gives me a little bit more space under here for more stuff, cables and whatnot. Figured it was the best way to do it. Okay, so Quad Cortex is uh, secured. I've also secured the power supply, uh, routed the, the, all the lines to the uh, little Junction box on the side, as you can see, I've got in one, in two, then I've got uh, out three and four, so those are the jack outs on the side of Quad Cortex, and then I've got a send and return for any pedals I want to put in a loop. Speaking of which, I figured at this point, now I've got everything sort of set up, I could power this on and use it just with Quad Cortex, but I wanted to also incorporate a few of the pedals to the board that, that have effects and sounds that you can't quite get as easily right now with Quad Cortex, so. First pedal I want to put on is my current favorite fuzz. This is the Bender 1973 from JHS. It's an awesome pedal. So I was going to stick that here. Next pedal that I wanted to put on because it's a really unique pedal and I figured it would work pretty well within the realms of Quad Cortex. Because obviously this thing can do so much already but there are some things it's not doing just yet, so. Next up is the Microcosm from Hologram Electronics, which I know that Aaron Intervals actually put that on his touring rig. We were talking about that actually, it seemed like a cool idea, because it is the kind of thing you could put in the loop and just patch in every now and again, and have a little mess around with it in between songs, so that's a really cool idea. Um, so yeah, so that's next. And last but not least, my personal favorite overdrive pedal uh, that I just seem to never want to leave the house without, and that's the Origin FX Revival Drive Compact. What's nice is we've got a little, as you can see, a little horizontal space just here so I can stick it sideways, which again, to some of you pedal OCD, pedal OCD guys will probably be like, no, it has to be facing, but you know, we only got a small amount of space here. Okay, so after a bit of head scratching and rigging things up, I've come to the conclusion that I'm missing one uh, XLR input uh, male XLR panel mounted input on the back so I've ordered one of those just now uh, once I've mounted that it means that I can run XLRs left and right straight into the back of the board and they're connected straight to the outs on the back of QC it was a, m a mistake on my part not ordering the right <laughs> connections on the back but yeah basically those are ordered so that's gonna be great other than that I've rigged it up so I put my guitar in the side here. We hit the Origin FX Revival Drive, then we hit the bender, then we hit the input of input one of the Quad Cortex. Uh, I've rigged up input two, if I ever want to use that. I've also rigged up effects loop. There's three and four, so you've got sends one and two, sends three and four, so they're mounted to the side here. Um, microcosms in loop one and two. Uh, and also I've got outputs, the jack outputs three and four, on the side as well. So there's a bunch of different routing options. We've also got MIDI on the other side, but we haven't hooked that up yet. What I wanted to do now is just power it on and check it all works. So while QC's powering on, I'll show you how it's routed under, underneath. Oh, it's just powered up. But as you can see here, we've got the DC7 connected. I'm running these XLRs for now. These are temporary, but as you can see, let me just brighten that up. As you can see at the back here, 
I'm actually running just a, an XLR cable now. When I get the other adapter, that'll go there. So they run through to here. I'm gonna get some new XLRs that are much shorter, easy to connect here. Um, but yeah, basically microcosm comes in to one of the effects loops and then the other effects loop is mounted here. I've also got outputs three and four. And yeah, as I said, inputs one going up there, input two coming to there. And that pretty much works. Okay, so I've just got a preset loaded up. <laughs> okay, sorry for the weird noises. Expression pedal's working. Next thing I want to do is just mess around with the pedals that I've got in front. <laughs> takes pedals so well. <clears throat> All right, so next I'm gonna throw in an effects loop here. So what I was just managed to set up there was an M0 capture I made, put the effects loop in, in the middle between the cab, uh, and then I was running a reverb and delay, well delay and then the reverb, and you also heard with the revival drive in front, feels and sounds immense. So I thought what I'd do now is just chuck on an expression pedal, um, yeah, give it a go, so let's see what happens. Okay, well, I mean, that pretty much sums it up at this point. As far as I can get this thing rigged until I get that extra connector, which will allow me to just plug the two XLRs out the back there. But everything's rigged up now. The two pedals that I've chosen, I feel at the minute, are working really well, you know. And this is fun in the loop. Again, it's nice to have the option. I can put anything in the loop now and I can choose any other two pedals, maybe even something little. Probably not, actually, to sit under there. That's real cable central, but you don't really need much when you've got Core Cortex. The idea being that I can use this to fly in and out uh, when we're doing the Frog Leap stuff and anything else I need to use it for. I mean, it's pretty weighty now, uh, but I think it's gonna do the job. It's got a flight case, um, but yeah, basically that's the video. Um, really chuffed with it. I think it's an absolutely awesome looking little beastie rig now. Um, really happy with how it's turned out and needs a little bit of refining from my end, but it's going to be great. So, yeah, basically, Martin, you're an absolute legend. Huge thank you to Schmidt Array for sending this across um, and working this out with me. Um, I really appreciate it. And, of course, 
you know, if you want to check Schmidt Array out, I'll put the links in the description box for you to go there and check out the pedal boards. They make fantastic stuff, really high quality, as you can see. And yeah, really love it. So thank you for watching this video. I'll link everything in the description box below, but let me know what you think about this video. Like, subscribe and share, and I'll see you all very soon.